today's video, we are going to talk about campgrounds in New Jersey. Why on earth would anybody want to come to New Jersey to come camping? I'll tell you what we're going to tell you right now. What does New Jersey have to offer in terms of camping? Number one, it's got a lot of diversity. We've got the southern end of the state has a very high density of campgrounds along the shore area of South Jersey. We also have northern northwest portion of the state up around the Delaware Water Gap, which has a lot of very remote mountainous terrain, uh, very similar to the Poconos in Pennsylvania. We also have the areas moving in the north and northeastern part of this, which are getting in closer to the New York metropolitan area. There's not as much camping up there. Most of it is going to be more expensive, but it also puts you in proximity to the advantages of all, all that New York City has to offer and a lot of the history and the, the culture in that, that portion of the state. New Jersey, even though it's a small state, we have 130 miles of beaches, which are very, very popular during the summer. That's why most of the campgrounds are in that southern region. To give you an idea of, of some of the diversity in New Jersey, we're going to just talk briefly about some of the camping trips that we've done. One of my favorites was in the Delaware Water Gap, and one of the neat things with this is that you have the opportunity to actually do a canoe trip and camp while you're canoeing when you're traveling down the Delaware River, which doesn't require a, a tremendous amount of effort. It's a rather leisurely camping trip gives you a chance to do a little fishing gives you a chance to see nature and there are some of the places along that Delaware water gap are so remote that when you're on the river you feel like you went back in time about 200 years like you're one of the original pioneers in the state because it is so remote. The National Park Service operates the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area and it's overall it's about 40 miles long but I've traditionally done a trip about 26 miles, starting out at Dingman's Ferry and ending at the visitor center down near the uh, bridge crossing the river on Route 80. And it's just one of the most enjoyable trips that, that I've ever done. I've also camped up in Sandy Hook. They had two campsites up there on Gateway National Recreation Area and Sandy Hook has a lot to offer. An old military fort there that used to guard New York Harbor during the Second World War, I think the First World War. They have big concrete bunkers there that huge gun protected the harbor and you can tour this area and I'll tell you about the history of it. There's a brig that's got a museum that's still, that you can tour some of the officers' homes up there on this fort. And there are a number of swimming beaches and Sandy Hook still has one of the one of the few legal naturist beaches, nudist beach for those you know clothing optional beaches. And being it's right out the confluence of the Hudson River and the Raritan Bay up there and all, the fishing gets to be quite good there certain times of the year. Particularly, the it's well renowned for the striper runs in that area. In the area, we're in kind of south central Jersey, we have the Pinelands. Many of them are no hookups, at, but they're very reasonable. It's like $3 a night to camp for a New Jersey resident. I think it's $5 a night if you're out of state. But there, there's not too many campgrounds in the Pine Barren, which is amazing because the Pine Barrens is 1.1 million acres. And it takes up 22% of the land mass in New Jersey. But a lot of it's marshy and you, you can't really build there. Pine Barrens is part of a national uh, preserve. Pine Barrens have underneath of them one of the biggest aquifers in the United States. So very protected. And they have those pygmy pines too, right? They have the pygmy pines. It's restricted in terms of usage for building. So there aren't that many places in the Pine Barrens per se that you can camp. And the Jersey Devil supposedly lives there. And right. we're going to go camp there in a couple of weeks. We're going to find out. But we've got Wharton State Forest as part of that Pine Barrens area. There are a number of primitive campgrounds over there that you you can camp in. We also have in, in the state a number of larger campgrounds that offer uh, some sort of attraction or more amenities. They usually run about $20 a night in the state parks, but two that I can think of, and we've camped in both of them, 
uh, are Round Valley and Spruce Run. Mm -hmm. Now, That's both of these, nice. these are both reservoirs, very large bodies of water. Spruce Run has campsites that you can uh, get with electricity, and they have uh, showers and bathhouses there, and you're camping right on the bank of the reservoir. Round Valley, their campsites can only be accessed remotely by boat or by hiking in. So those are the only two ways to, to be able to camp at Round Valley. So that's a, an interesting, it's I think the only campground in the state in, in New Jersey that's like this. Sometimes I will see on YouTube or Facebook, it'll say beachfront camping in New Jersey. Um, there really isn't any, okay? Now, there may be beachfront for a lake, but as far as I'm aware, there is no camping on the beach that is on the Atlantic Ocean in the state of New Jersey. There, you, overnight, I think you can go fishing at one of them. I'll be taken in by those people right. that say the oceanfront camping in New Jersey. It, it doesn't exist. You cannot put a tent on the beach in New Jersey and camp overnight, okay? It's... Even though we have, you know, 130 miles of beaches, you're not allowed to do it. You're not allowed to have fires on the beach in New Jersey. We have an interesting, uh, another interesting state park called Island Beach. Now, Island Beach has, uh, they offer dew buggy passes. If you have a four-wheel drive vehicle and you have the right equipment to meet the criteria, you can get a beach buggy pass and go on the beach and fish but you have to be engaged in fishing. Now, they actually have motorhomes that have four-wheel drive, and they take these things out on the beach down at the south end, and they kind of congregate there. It's almost like a motorhome club, a little clique of people, and they have their motorhomes there, but they, somebody has to be engaged in fishing. You can't just go out there and expect to right. be able to spend the night and sleep in your motorhome and camp. There is one campground up in that gateway region outside of New York where you can actually see the Statue of Liberty from the campground. From what I've seen in the photographs of this campground, it's primarily Class A motorhomes, the big bus type motorhomes. It's almost like a parking lot where they're like, you know, about 10 feet apart, all parked in rows out there. And it's expensive. I think it's about $100 or more a night. but you know, you're in really close proximity to the city, and so you don't have to deal with spending a fortune traveling back and forth, and you can leave your motorhome right there in the campground. In our area, in our portion of the state, we have the, the Pine Barrens and Wharton State Forest, where we have a lot of state park campgrounds. Most of them are pretty rural. They don't have a lot of amenities. Uh, yes. There is one family campground down there in Wharton that has flush toilets and showers and I think it's like about $20 a night. So I put a map up in here so according to the New Jersey uh, Campground Owners Association I guess it is six different regions and Rick was talking about the ones up north going down you had the greater Atlantic City region the shore region and the southern shore region. By far most of the campgrounds in New Jersey or in the Southern Shore region. And there's a reason for this. There's a lot of towns down there. There's a lot of beachfront. The housing market boom went up. And then I guess campgrounds jumped on board and they put in a lot of campgrounds close to the beach. So a lot of people will have a, a camper and put it in a campground close to the beach. There are numerous campgrounds all the way from uh, Atlantic City all the way down to Cape May. And some of them are just seasonal sites. Some of them are seasonal and they rent some spots out. They have kind of different sections, but it gets crowded. There's a lot of campgrounds down there. Some may have a hundred sites. Some may have 700 sites and they're like small bustling cities. So I say go online to their website, check out the campground first because everyone has different rules. They have different regulations. You know, most have pools, some have lakes. Some have different, you know, activities for the kids. The other thing, they have a different feel for each town. Right. Well, Atlantic City mm -hmm. is a casino area where the shows. Yeah. Um, and the boardwalk. And the boardwalk. 
it's also gotten a reputation as having a lot of rundown areas well, of the city and lately it has and, yes. uh, and an increasing crime rate. There is Lucy the elephant. And Margie. I think they were going to tear her down. I remember being a little, little kid going through that. It's some elephant that you can walk through. And she's actually a national historic landmark. Yeah. So Ocean City is a very, very popular destination for families. Okay. Ocean City has a boardwalk. It's also a dry town. There are no bars or liquor stores in Ocean City. Of course, going over the bridge, <laughs> believe me, there's a liquor store right there that's very crowded. Um, but there's no bars or anything. So it's more family oriented. And then you get on farther south to the Wildwood area. That has a reputation for being young people's town. The, the college crowd wants to go there. And then you've got Cape May at the very tip, which has uh, streets that have lovely Victorian homes on them. Yes. It was a seaport town years ago. A lot of sea captains lived in these Victorian homes. They have the widow's walks on the roof. There is the ferry. You could take that ferry over to Delaware. I will say this about New Jersey beaches. They are crowded, okay? New Jersey has great beaches. We really do. Well-maintained. Most of them you have to pay to go on. The only one, I only know of two free ones still, which is Wildwood and Strathmere. I don't know the further the beaches up north, okay? So you got to, you know, buy a beach tag for the day, which may be like, I don't know, five, eight bucks, something like that to get on. Now, weekends may not be the best time to go, especially if you're going during the summer into a shore community, expect it to be extremely crowded. The first time I went up to North Jersey, being from South Jersey, I was in shock because they look completely different as the geography. You know, you've got the mountains, you've got you know, the, the Delaware Water Gap area, which is beautiful um, up there. I'm sure there's probably an occasional black bear down here in South Jersey. I think I've heard of a few, but up north is where the black bear are. Okay. We have rattlesnakes. Uh, and we have water well, moccasins. If you go up in the Water Gap area, you probably have both rattle, rattlesnakes and copperheads up there. And then mm -hmm. not too many of the campgrounds around here are year round campgrounds. We did stay at a uh, private campground up in the northern part of the state last year in January and we were out up there in 12 degree weather. It's dry camping because obviously they have to shut the water off otherwise everything would freeze up. This is the website where you can get all the information for the campgrounds. It's New Jersey Campground Owners Association. I'm also going to put a link to that below. If you would rather have all the names of the campgrounds and their websites listed in a Google box, just shoot me an email. It's rickshiron9 at gmail.com and then I'll send you that doc. That's a wrap, everyone. You know what to do if you like this video. You all come back now, you hear?